a quick look at my first shortwave receiver. It was an Astor radiogram from the early 1950s, purchased at an auction in 1980 for $2, at a time when these types of radios were not as collectible as they later became. There are four bands, the medium wave broadcast band and shortwave bands at 19, 25 and 31 metres. As it says, it's a band spread shortwave receiver, not general coverage. Therefore, it couldn't receive amateur signals, only the shortwave broadcast stations. Tuning was backwards, with the low frequency towards the right end of the dial. 19 metres went from 14.9 to 15.5 megahertz. It was this band that gave me the first taste of WWV reception on 15 megahertz. The 25 metre band went from about 11.5 to 12 megahertz, and it was 12 megahertz where I got my first taste of VNG. This is VNG, Lyndhurst, Victoria, Australia, on 4.5, 7.5, or 12 megahertz. Finally, on the short waves, was 31 metres. That went from 9.4 to above 9.8 megahertz. Countries were listed, though I'm not sure if those frequencies were even valid at the time that I was using this set in the early 1980s. Most of the dial is taken up by the medium wave band. In Australia, it was common up to about the early 1970s for broadcast stations to be marked on the dial rather than their frequency. The capital city stations are marked in big lettering and the country stations in blue smaller lettering. Many stations have since moved frequency, often from the AM to the FM band. There may still be transmissions on those old frequencies but they may be occupied by radio for the print handicapped, specialist sports or ethnic stations. And there are also some minor frequency changes in 1978 when Australia moved from 10 to 9 kHz station spacing. This was the volume knob and this the tuning control. The band change switch was here. You had your three shortwave bands, medium wave and then the turntable. The record player never worked. It had three speeds of 33, 78 and 45. It dates from the era when 33 RPM microgroove records were new, but 78s were still in wide circulation. It was mono, stereo was to take off in the late 1950s. The stylus had different needles for 78 and the microgroove 33 and 45 RPM records. This, I think, was so that records could be stacked. As was fairly normal, the cable was just two wires, an active and a neutral, no connection to earth. There were two other wires poking out the back, the black being the earth connection and the cream being an antenna connection. The radio has spent a lot of time in a shed, but surprisingly still works. This is the variable capacitor. It would be two or three gang. You can see the top of the chassis. Valve, IF transformer. This unit would likely have had five or six valves. A couple of tubes for the audio amplifier. Maybe one for the IF amplifier possibly a diode valve that might have been in the case of another valve for the envelope detector for AM and one or two valves for the front end. There might have been a converter in the one valve containing a mixer and an oscillator that converted the signals arriving at the front end down to a 455 kHz IF. There would have been sets of coils, a total of four sets, one for the front end 
and one for the local oscillator to allow the four bands to be covered. By that time, the octal valves had been superseded by the all glass types, either seven or nine pin.